Now we all played games, they feel a little bit static. The camera doesn't move very much, the character feels slightly odd, there is no changes in camera or character, the controls when you press buttons, there's no game feel and it feels slightly odd and you feel disconnected from the experience that you're trying to basically live through the game. Now, three C's is something that us AAA developers talk about, work on, and basically obsess about during the game development. And to me, it's the biggest differentiator between a AAA looking game and maybe an indie looking game. And it's because in AAA, we spend so much time looking at the character, camera, and controls. And these three things need to work together in a symbiotic way in order to give the player the best experience. I'm also going to share some tips that I've learned throughout my years on how to get these three Cs to look absolutely amazing. Now, if you're interested, come with me and let's talk about three Cs. Welcome to another video. I am currently uh, hosting a workshop of my own and um, I have students that I was talking about three C's about and it's actually quite interesting to know that even though I have experienced animators doing the workshop, learning things, they didn't really know about three C's and that got me thinking that perhaps I should do a video about it here in this channel because I think that it's really important for anybody that wants to be a games developer that is interested in actually knowing how games work to understand that these three C's are arguably one of the most important things that you can learn as a game developer. Now, if you enjoy this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below about what you think about the content. I love to speak with you guys. And a lot of the times, we don't actually get a lot of comments, unfortunately. I feel like the content gets consumed, but there's not a lot of feedback. So please leave your feedback and let me know what you think about this information and hopefully it is useful to you. Just saying either is yes useful, no for these reasons, how to get things better, makes the channel better and therefore makes me better and makes the content better as a result. Now, what are three C's and how do they work? The first C and probably the most important one is character. Now, character in 3Cs mean animation responsiveness, and mean traversal mechanics, mean weight and momentum, and also hitboxes, collision, and also animation fidelity and blending. Those are the things that you're thinking about when you're thinking about the specific 3Cs of the game, but as an animation department, you normally deal with those as a separate thing in the beginning of the game. And then towards the end of the game, you are looking to actually make sure that they play well to camera, they play well with controllers, they feel good, they are responsive. Camera is the second 3C. And camera deals with different things, but also depends on the type of camera that you're using. So you have first person cameras, games like Doom and Call of Duty. You have third person cameras, such as Uncharted or Tomb Raider. And then you have isometric, top-down, or 2D, 2.5D, which is basically like more flat cameras. So classic RPGs, strategy games, Diablo, Hades, think about those games. Those are basically the cameras that you have. Now, when it comes to the three Cs, the things that you have to think about is going to be tracking and framing of the camera when you are playing. The depth and field of view, which is going to be called either DOF or FOV in the game, which is DOV or FOV, that basically gives you that visibility of the player. Can the player see enough of the world? You also are thinking about camera lag and responsiveness. Make sure that does it feel natural? Is it too fast? Is it too slow? Can it ease in and ease out? And then you're looking at collision and obstruction of objects or walls or etc. This is basically when, if you are rotating a camera and you are against a wall, instead of rotating 360 around the character, now you have to make sure that there is code in there to make sure that when you rotate a camera and you hit that wall, the camera doesn't go through the wall and then up the other side, the camera is conscious of the wall and then actually rotates a little closer to the player and then it kind of goes the other way. Otherwise, you would actually see gates and broken games and no textures and all kinds of stuff, which I'm pretty sure most of you have experienced in bugs in different games. Now, the third and final C is going to be controls. Controls are super, super important and ultimately is how you interact with the game. So some of the things that you're thinking about, and this is normally designed that starts this process, is going to be input delay. How fast does the game respond to player actions? 
uh, button mapping, which is very much like making sure that each action corresponds to a button or to multiple buttons, conjunction of buttons, stuff like that. Analog versus digital movement. This one is a little bit more complex to understand, but it's very much that if you play on a keyboard, keyboards normally have, if you press W, you only have a keystroke. There's no in between that keystroke. It's just on and off, on and off. Now for digital movement or precise movement, you have controllers and controls because they have digital movement. All of a sudden you can basically dial in or dial out your runs or your sprints or whatever. So you have normally animations in between all the on and off. That's basically what analog versus digital movement means. And then you're also thinking about customization and accessibility. Uh, this is where you actually want to think about how easy it is to control some games. You probably know that some games, when you play it, the controls feel just right. Oh my God, it's great. And then lastly, the feedback that you get from that controller when you're actually playing your animations, when there's sounds, when there's haptics to reinforce the, the hits to reinforce where you are if the floor is shaking and you're about to fall off your controller can shake a little bit before you fall so that is basically what the three c's are character camera and controls these three c's and i'm going to mention that a few times they are interconnected and they have to work incredibly well together as one and when they do they disappear and they are amazing I'm going to start by talking about the obstacles of 3Cs because that's normally the major problem in why certain studios don't tackle 3Cs or they just leave 3Cs to the side because it can get complex. So the first obstacle is who owns 3Cs? Who owns the idea of getting these things to work with each other? And most of the times things can get really complicated incredibly fast because when you start thinking about less work on 3Cs, on paper it sounds great, but in practice, Cameras need engineering, they need design, characters need design, they need animations, they need art, and then the controller also needs engineering, but they also need design. So there's a lot of overlapping with a lot of different departments. You can start to understand where the friction might come from all of this stuff. So ownership sometimes becomes an obstacle. Now, the other obstacle of 3Cs is hard to make them play with each other because it requires efforts from different teams as you probably gathered already. The third obstacle is design actually informs 3Cs initially because it's on paper, but then once you start executing 3Cs, you start to realize that these actually inform design again, because even though design has certain ideas of how things should work, when you actually play in the game, things feel very different. And then things start changing. And then we go, this doesn't work design, even though it was on paper, can we change it? Can we make it better, right? So that's basically another obstacle that sometimes you find in a lot of 3Cs. Now, the problems that come from these obstacles are the following. If the character doesn't move well, normally the game feels sluggish. So character not moving well equals sluggish. Now, we also have camera. If the camera is bad, the setup of the camera is bad, then players feel disoriented. They don't know exactly where to go, what to do, and I don't know where I am. Did I flip the character here? Am I above the character, below the character? It feels horrible. I'm pretty sure you might have felt it in some games before. And if the controls are actually unresponsive, the game becomes frustrating. So we all have been in games that basically you're trying to press a button, you're trying to get the character to react, and then the character is not doing the movement or is getting stuck in the previous movement. Um, those kind of things become super frustrating for games. And I know I've let go of games and I put the controller down because I cannot stand it. So responsiveness is a huge thing. Now, how do you actually kind of solve some of these problems? Now, when it comes to actually collaborating with others and getting 3Cs to work, to me, getting somebody to be the leader, the owner, or the department being the leader and the owner is the best way to go about. And based once again on personal experience, the best department to deal with three Cs is normally the animation department. And I know I'm biased, but the animation department is normally the best. And the games that I've done it with the animation department leading it, normally are the ones that get the best results. And the reason why I think is because uh, the three C's are all about visual and feel. And the, these two things are basically what animation does best because we deal with motion and we'll deal with emotion. And we understand exactly how, if the design has an intended 
um, feel for the player. Like we know that working on the animations, working on that camera positioning, and then testing it out with our own animations and having a feel for it, we can actually get the most out of that animation. And it's similar to how animators become directors with Pixar and DreamWorks, and then eventually they become live directors. And those two th things actually translate I think that it's all the animation knowledge of actually kind of like knowing what the character is thinking, how, how the audience is perceiving it, how the audience is feeling, and all of those things gets kind of combined into one. So um, a lot of good animators become great directors, and I do think that a really good animator normally has a really good eye to connect that character and camera together with a really good feel and tweaking things incredibly well. Um, there's a really good talk, a GDC talk, by the studio that created the game Nier Automata. And in that talk, specifically, they had a uh, animation lead or a director that they had a different name. They call it the Animation Design Director, I believe that was the name. So he had a specific name, which I think he fits brilliantly, because he was tweaking the character, the camera, the controls all the time. And he was asking for changes in the numbers, in the input, in the character, in the animations, cut a frame here, cut a frame there. And this is basically ultimately what the Animation Director is doing all the time to make sure that the character feels good. So it's kind of on the realm of animation, at least the way I see it. And he ends up working out incredibly well. Something that you might not know is that games normally come together right at the end. And it might sound obvious when you think about it, but there's so much tech and there's an engine and there's so much information that needs to go in and it's going in all the time. And sometimes it breaks and sometimes it's not broken. And, and sometimes it needs more, sometimes it needs less and feedback and so on and so forth. That because you're constantly tweaking things all the time, the game looks broken most of the time or it looks and feels slightly off. And a lot of the time, myself included, sometimes you don't feel that the game is gonna be good right until the end, three months before, six months before the game comes out. And this is normally when there's those three C's really come together because that's when all the content is in and you can start tweaking things to make things better. Then going back to the assets and then reanimate them or ask for new code, etc., etc. So waiting until a later point to actually change your three C's when it comes to design, when it comes to animations and cameras works well because you are trying to make the game fun and these three C's basically bolt on on top of everything that has been done on the game. So it helps a lot to look at it and then the design department, the code department, the animation department, keeping their minds open to change because the feel of the game is super important, especially towards the end and can make or break a game. Now, as a last solution or tip that I can give you is that the three C's should be invisible. Very much like when you watch a film and it's incredibly well done and you don't think about the camera, as you're taking through the story, you're just looking at the character doing stuff and even though cameras can be amazing and it can be shaky and can be moving and stuff, you're not really thinking about the camera movement unless it's really badly done. In really bad movies, you're 100% are conscious of the camera and the actor and what they are doing together. And in games, it's kind of the same. When you're doing incredibly well, it works 100% of the time and you don't feel it and you just feel amazing in the game. Good example is Spider-Man from Insomniac as of late, or God of War as well, great game, or Nier Automata, which I just mentioned in this video. So that is what you ultimately want from your three C's. Now, I have to actually add a disclaimer here to this three C's conversation because the three C's, you can never truly get it 100%. And this is to do with players wanting freedom. Because here's what most players will tell you in games, I want to be able to do everything that I want to do in the game. However, that is not truly what they want. Because if they did, they would fall through levels, they would go through walls, they will, they will do a bunch of stuff that basically feels like the game is broken. So you have to be careful on how much you basically funnel the, the player and how much freedom you give to the player. So you're always playing in this in-between of like giving a lot of freedom and kind of like funneling the player a little bit more so you can control where the player sees or feels or does. 
So two examples of this that I think basically play off each other really well is God of War and Elden Ring. So in God of War, one of the complaints that players had is that it feels almost like on rails, like the experience, at least on the first one that came out not long ago from Corey Barlog and Sonny Santa Monica. So players wanted more freedom and it felt like you were just following the player all the time and you're being guided exactly where you want to need to go and then you cannot see very much and you're always around craters and the camera is really close to Kratos and they want you to feel and see exactly what you want to see and in specific cases like if you're rowing a boat then the camera is a little bit more like distant from the character and that's really cool but if you are with craters then the camera is a little bit closer if you're in fights the camera might change a little bit to give you more vision or more visibility but you still gonna be in like you know taken into a specific place now people complained about that because it's kind of restrictive and it, basically they wanted to see more but that was the experience of that game and that those three C's were developed specifically for that experience now Elden Ring they give you a lot of view, right? Because it's an open world game, it's a completely different game, and you wanna see the vistas, you wanna make sure that you know exactly where you're going, you wanna see how far you can go, it's really cool. However, people complain that, you know, sometimes the camera gets stuck or you get disoriented if you're actually facing a boss. Sometimes you don't know where you are, right? Because you're turning around, around and now you're behind the boss and your character's in front of the boss and you cannot really hit things correctly. You want to be behind it now. Uh, so there's a lot of things there that don't quite work, but that is a lot of freedom. So players will never be 100% happy with your solution, but as long as your solution, your 3C solution is tailored to that specific game, then you are doing the right job. And you're gonna get some slack because you most likely have either funneled the player too much or gave too much freedom but you know that the experience overall is much better with the three c's than it would be without it okay so i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you understand a little bit more about what the three c's are and why they are so important for your games when you play them next time also pay attention when you actually don't feel a game or you feel like a game is slightly odd and you don't know why, think about the character, cameras and controls and see which one feels odd. I'm pretty sure you'll find that at least one or both or the three of them are going to be odd and you're going to most likely be able to pinpoint where things are wrong. If you do, comment below about the games that you play that are the best and the worst when it comes to these three C's because we all have our favorites and I hope to see you guys next time as usual. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to actually give it a like, comment below and subscribe for more. Until next week, stay well, stay safe, peace.